Hey everyone, I'm Matt Jobin with Reach Your Summit. Backpacking in the winter time and in the shoulder season leading up to those colder months can be a very rewarding and exhilarating experience. Now it's often referred to as a full-time job once the temperature drops because we're constantly having to do things and work hard to stay warm throughout the day. Now it's a little easier to do that during the daylight hours when we're active and we're hiking on the trail. Once we roll into camp and we're a little more stationary, it's harder to stay warm. In this video, I'm going to share with you some tips and methods that I like to use to stay warm, safe, and comfortable when I'm in camp at night during my winter trips. Now staying warm at night actually begins before you even get to camp. Now with my layering system during the day, I'm gonna start off with my base layer this is my next to skin or my second skin layer and that's going to wick away moisture and keep my skin dry. On top of that, I'll wear my insulated layer which is going to be a fleece. And outside of that, I'm going to wear my outer shell, hard shell, soft shell. And this layer is going to protect me from the elements, wind, rain, snow, and it's going to keep these insulated layers a little bit drier. Throughout the day, when we're staying active, we're perspiring. And if we're wearing our down puffy or an insulated layer like that, uh, it's a little more likely to collect moisture and keep you a little less warm. So what I'll do is I'll reserve this for moments when I'm going to stop take a break, have a snack, uh, but most importantly, I will save this for when I get to camp, and I will also possibly use this as an extra layer when I'm sleeping at night. So next is my campsite selection. Before I set up my shelter, I'm going to scope out the area and make sure that I look for a couple of qualities that will allow me a five-star campsite and a comfortable sleep for the night. Now this spot here is perfect. I have nice flat level ground for my shelter. I've got pine needles on the ground. That will help give me a little more insulation and comfort. The trees surrounding my camp area are going to act as a wind block and they also reflect a little bit of heat back toward my shelter for the night. All right, now the first thing that I like to do before I go into my shelter at night is a little bit of light exercise. You don't wanna do anything too rigorous and start sweating because then you're gonna end up getting cold a lot quicker. Now for sleeping, I'll double up with my pads. I'll start off by using a closed cell foam pad like this with reflective material on one side to help reflect some heat back toward my pad and my sleeping bag. On top of that pad, I'll put an air inflated pad. This one is insulated and this will keep me a little further off the ground. In the winter time, especially when the temperatures drop to around 15 degrees Fahrenheit or less, I will use a sleeping bag. During the day when we're out hiking, our sleeping bags are compressed. So what I'll do is I'll shake that bag out. Get all of that loft nice and fluffy again.
along with my down puffy jacket, I'll always make sure to bring an extra pair of sleep clothes. Sleep clothes will not see the light of day. They always stay in my pack until I get into my shelter at night. This will be an extra mid-weight base layer, some base layer pants, and an extra pair of socks. Now along with that, I'll also bring a hat. Now a wool hat like this will help retain more heat. Uh, there's no certain percentage of the amount of body heat that we lose from our heads, but it is relatively high due to our blood vessels being closer to the skin. So having this with my mummy style sleeping bag is actually going to help me retain a little more heat and allow me to stay a little more comfortable. A pair of fleece gloves. Gloves and my really thick socks. These are also going to help keep my extremities warm. Now, it's our body's natural defense mechanism to take that heat from our extremities, like our fingers and toes first, and bring it to our core to keep our vital organs warm. So keeping this around my fingers and wearing thick wool socks around my toes will allow me to stay warm and allow my core to stay warm as well. Balaclava. This you can wear around your neck, around your head if you get cold. When you're laying in your sleeping bag, always make sure to keep your mouth and your nose exposed. It'll definitely get a little chilly, but you don't want that perspiration collecting inside of the bag. It's just going to cool you down a lot quicker. If you're just doing a couple of nights, you can also add some chemical hand warmer packets into your pack if you wanted for a little bit of extra warmth. Now in the winter time, it's a little harder to stay focused on staying hydrated throughout the day, but it is very important to do so. It'll help keep your temperature regulated in your body uh, and also keep you from getting colder. Now jeans in the winter time are indispensable. I'll carry two with me. One of them I will have either wrapped in duct tape like this. This helps keep it a little bit insulated. Uh, or you can use a sock. Now with that sock around my bottle, it's going to keep it insulated even a little bit more. Now another way that you can keep your water from freezing in your bottle is to carry it upside down just like this in your pack or inside your bottle pocket and it's going to keep the mouth from freezing so you can open it and hopefully still drink some liquid. Now another bottle that I'll carry with me is a designated pee bottle. Make sure to label it, make sure it has a different color cap, uh, and just be careful that you don't end up possibly drinking it in the middle of the night. Uh, and feeling like you're on a survival show. And if you hold your pee throughout the night, your body is actually using some of that extra heat to keep it warm from freezing. So get out, go to the bathroom if you have to. It'll help you stay warm and comfortable throughout the night when you're sleeping. Now another trick is to take some of that water from your Nalgene bottle and boil it. Once you boil the water, you can take your Nalgene, and you can pour that water right back in. You don't have to worry about burning your hands, and you can use this now as a little mini space heater in your sleeping bag.
All right, I will take this nice hot water bottle, stick it right in the foot area of my sleeping bag. And that's it. Now another issue that we have to deal with in the winter time is cold boots. And who wants to wake up in the morning, put on some cold footwear? Not me. So what I will do to mitigate that is I'll take off my boots and then I will take a plastic bag, shopping bag. Uh, you can also use a nylon stuff sack Flip that inside out. You can remove your insoles if you want to. Uh, or you can just take your footwear and put it right in the bag. Just like that. Then what I'll do, I'll stuff that right in my sleeping bag also. With that little space heater Nalgene bottle inside, uh, it's going to keep my footwear warm as well, and my body heat will keep it warm, and it'll be a lot more comfortable to put that footwear on in the morning. Uh, but also with that stuff sack or that grocery bag, that's going to keep any dirt or any snow or anything from getting inside of my sleeping bag and causing me to get cold. Oh yeah, this is cozy. Now with a single wall tent like this designed for mountaineering and winter conditions, uh, it's going to be just this breathable nylon fabric. Uh, so ventilation is very, very important. So I'll do that. I've got my air vent there. I also, when this door is zipped up, I have one right down here near the foot of the, the tent uh, in the doorway. Now, condensation still going to be something that is unavoidable uh, if you're staying in a tent shelter. You're going to get a little bit no matter what. Uh, and the whole thing is trying to mitigate that and keep that from happening and getting really, really bad. If you're out in a three season tent and uh, the conditions and location allow, your breathability is going to be a little bit better. Um, but when you're out and the elements are really bad, it's good to have a nice durable shelter that is able to withstand winds and heavy snow and shed that snow so the tent is not collapsing on you. Uh, hammocking, it's a little bit easier too, but you have to do a little bit more to stay warm. Now if you still get cold, you can also use a sleeping bag liner. So something like this will slide right inside of your sleeping bag. That will also collect your body oils, so it'll protect your sleeping bag in the long term. Uh, but it'll also help trap some body heat and reflect it back to you. All right, I saved the best for last. Sweets and hot drinks. I'll bring chocolate bars with me, like a Snickers, uh, hot chocolate, hot tea, whatever you prefer. Having something nice and warm to drink before you go into your sleeping bag, or also having a chocolate bar or some type of sweet uh, will keep your metabolism going, keep your furnace going, and help your body regulate and stay warm throughout the night when you're sleeping. So there you have it. Those are some tips and methods that I like to use to stay warm when I'm out in the winter time. If you have any questions, please feel free to send them in a comment below, or you can get in touch with me at the link provided in the video description. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for the support. I'll see you outside.